Hi, good morning, good afternoon, everyone. This is the Human Colony Saturday webinar. Today is January 14th, and we have Jim Charles, who has joined us again to channel. Good morning. Hi, Jim. Good morning. How are, how is everybody doing? I think we're doing pretty wonderful. Um, really excited to have you back with us again, of course. And um, so we are probably going to start off with some requests, I would say. Um, quickly, though, I will read who we have in the room with us here. Um, we have Angie, Brian, Katie, Christine, Christy, David, or David Allen, and David, uh, Herkimer Diamond, Jim, Khan, Krellick, Pete, Shear, Will, Sheena, I might have mispronounced that, it's Sheena, something like that, I'm sorry, and myself, Bree. <laughs> and um, so we're going to be taking some requests and then doing some blessings before Jim gets started um, with channeling. So we will see who decides to come through today for some awesome messages. And um, I also wanted to mention, please go to our website, humancolony.org, in order to see our updated events, um, what we have going on. And um, we also have started a book project where we are transcribing very important channelings into written format so that we can post, basically publish a book so that people are able to read this stuff instead of watching videos all day long. Uh, so if you would like to get involved in helping out with an awesome epic book, please let us know. We want volunteers. You can email max at humancolony.org if you are interested. Um, you can also reach out to any of us on humancolony.org. And um, of course, Jim offers private sessions, which are totally awesome, by the way. I can attest to that. So. If you want to book no, a private, <laughs> of course, totally life-changing for me at least. If you want to book a private session with Jim, you can contact him um, at his email, which is Jim. Jim Reiki at gmail.com. J-I-M-R-E-I-K-I -I at gmail.com. Awesome. Okay. Thank you, Jim. Um, he had there's more information on humancolony.org about his sessions and everything so you can go to humancolony.org slash jim also you can donate to humancolony.org if you wish to it's greatly appreciated to make sure we can keep our website up and running and everything so if you want to do that humancolony.org slash donate thank you everybody for joining and um i think we can start taking some requests before we go into blessings so um let's see Oh, oh, Jim, who's in the room with you? I'm so sorry. I have Angie and Carolyn, right? right? And Ray today. And I know that David wanted to come, but he's he was running late, so I'm not sure if he's going to come or not. Awesome. He's online. Oh, David's online. Okay. Oh, cool. Well, he made it in distance. Awesome. Okay. Uh, um, so we had some requests. I'm seeing Lakesh is definitely being requested. And um, let's see, who else do we have? Any other requests from anyone? Um, can you channel the first reflections of God? Hmm. The first reflections? Well, he's like all kinds of reflections. So I'm mean, very... <laughs> perspectives so yep everything that we see way you want comes, yeah uh, somebody requested a lot elijah okay um sambuka um let's see a creator being from the creator realm yes um more pull, coming in for lakesh to Kerr. um hybrid baby children or young children like that 2.1 year old yael who had stopped by which was adorable um the seraphim thorax the blue lion of the nova triad collective cryon nostradamus oh boy okay we have tons of requests solomon 
All right, I'm going to end it there. So <laughs> tons of people were asking for today. So thank you, everybody. Yes. Um, thank you. And, and the whispers. I don't know what the whispers is. OK, good with requests. Uh, moving on to blessings. Um, if you would like to provide a blessing, I think um, Will said he was looking to provide a blessing. Oh, and a heads up for people who are on mobile devices, you are able to um, say that you have a question in the Google Hangouts chat for mobile users, which is separate from this side chat. So put in there, you want to ask a question, I'll add you to the queue, and then you can ask your question when you are called. Um, thank you, everybody. And uh, so, Will, you have a blessing for us. And Angie in the room here has a blessing, too. Oh, wonderful. She yes. can go after. Awesome. So the whisperers are going to give my blessing. So, And if they want to come through later on today, that'd be awesome. Um, so I ask the Aquarian Fire to flow in through and around us all in every way and everywhere and everyone so that the messages that come through will be for the highest good of all involved. So here are the whisperers. There are many islands in the universe that extend their hands to you in friendship. However, we are different in the sense that we do not have a corporeal body and do not live in the same way and means that you do at this time. But we still extend ourselves to you with our great energies, with our love, with our understanding, and yes, patience and goodwill. We pray that you will move forward as you should in this time of ascension. That was beautiful. Wow. Whispers, actual whispers. Thanks, Will. Interesting. All right. Um, Angie, please. Angie with Jim. Yeah. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Mura nata nata da wa niata ya wa na tia siti tia ya wa ma ya wa sate ya wa ta ni ya 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 wa wa ni ya wa ya ya tua wa iya wa ni wa 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 ya ta wa iya te. The light beings that are here today are welcome to join us always in prayer and solitude, are always welcome to join us in joy, happiness, and celebration of the times that are to come. We love you and we reach out to you always. May God be with you and light your paths, knowing that you are on a very large journey that will take a long period, but in our eyes, a very short blink of the eye. Beautiful. Thank you. You're even doing some sign language stuff there, Jim. Interesting. Okay, I don't know what that was about, but they <laughs> well, indicated that they, the sign language was necessary. I dig it. So. That's awesome. Um, all right. Uh, Pete said that he has a blessing for us. Okay. Hi. I'm having a, I am having the urge to get the blasting out. So instead of me just saying cats on the ceiling and leer and feline tongue and... Anyways, I try my best. 
Very good. Blessings. I pray that my intentions come through clearly. It is so that light penetrates through all of the universe, and there is no place in eternity where the light does not exist. And so therefore we wish you great happiness as your planet becomes more enlightened and the brightness that comes from your world increases. We know that you are working hard to build a world of enlightenment, peace and understanding. Let wisdom guide your way so that you may be those who will light other ways in the future. Awesome. Thank you so much. Awesome. Uh, Brian has a blessing for us. Yeah, can you guys hear me okay? Yes, sir. Niakeyalea Many of the others speak of love and light, wisdom and the brightness of God. But remember, there are also tempests and troubles to come. But you can overcome them with your faith and with your diligence to the positive side of all things. Remember to in surround yourself with those that are positive and those that seek out the goodness and positivity of life. Remember that when the troubles do come, it is easier to go through when those around you are praying for you, lifting you up, and encouraging you. If you are around those that are negative, then there is a chance that you may become discouraged. But take heart. We are here to lift you up. Amazing. Thank you, everybody, for the beautiful blessings this morning. Love raising the vibrations. I think we're ready to get started. Um, were there any last announcements or anything? Jim, did you have anything to announce before we get started? Um, hopefully, we'll have Kim Louise come back pretty soon. I see that she has moved and everything, and um, I give her a shout out. We miss you very much and you haven't channeled with us for a long time. So we hope that you come and join us soon again. Um, also that um, I, I will probably be here next week. And in the future we have some um, channeling sessions with Alina Kapulnik and Sean Swanson that will be coming on some Saturday webinars or maybe even Sunday, I'm not sure. But um, we will be involved in getting more guest speakers of this nature uh, coming up shortly. So we already have uh, Sean and uh, Alina scheduled for some future uh, discussions and channelings. So it's really good. Wow, that's so exciting. It's really cool to bring people in who are out doing their own thing and it's just so exciting that we're all kind of figuring out our path little by little yeah, so I love that <laughs> that's awesome all right awesome, awesome all right Jim well please go right ahead thank you so much we're excited and we love you love you too and um, oh I love you all and thank you for being here uh, I don't know who's coming through today but there's a zillion requests so there's 
a lot of people here. So uh, let's see who has the most important messages to come through first. Or maybe they are just here to uh, answer questions. I know there's right now there's a lot of questions out there, and I'm not sure who's coming through to answer them, but they're telling me that there's a lot of questions out there. So, alrighty then, let's see who comes. Have a wonderful day. Blessings to all. Greetings, this is Lakesh. How is everyone today? Wonderful. Oh, so wonderful. Hi, Lakesh. Thanks for joining us. Oh, thank you for having me here. It's so great is to hear from you. How are you? I am very well, thank you. Is there questions out there for me? I heard that they, someone has called me. Yeah, uh, we had multiple people call on you, and so as people are kind of um, uh, getting lined up to ask questions to you in particular, I know that um, we had heard from Gabriel that you were, per you were interested in um, possibly telling us more about how life w is on your planet, and I know you've talked about this a little bit in previous webinars, but um, maybe more about your your culture and maybe just interesting, unusual things you could share with us as people are lining up with questions. Well, I know that I have shared many things about my culture. I've shared many things about the three worlds that we come from. You realize that the, the control of the planet comes from the band that is around the center, which is the manufacturing and the different things that happen business-wise on the planet, whereas otherwise than that, there are those that achieve many goals and uh, many achievements in their privilege. As you gain education, as you gain status as an artist, musician, or someone of notoriety, you gain your privileges. And therefore, this is how our planet runs. We do not have a schooling system per se, but each individual works on their own and has their own academic program because of all the different ways that they have been analyzed as a child. They move up through the ranks of their own ranks and do the things that are most interesting for them. We find that if you do what is interesting for you, that you will achieve greater amounts of success. Now, there are some that have limited uh, educational or limited IQ and can only reach certain areas of privilege. However, these areas are still very high in our society, and they are not looked at as lower in any way. They are looked at as equals, whereas I have to describe it that way because of your society, because of how you see things. You see, we look at things as equal, but if you were to come to our place, you may not see it that way. You may foresee or perceive that there are people on many different levels, which is very true. The levels of achievement that come to each person are earned. And as they earn their levels of achievement, they are celebrated at the end of each course or each time that they are willing to share their optimum creation at that, at that particular time. So our class of system for education is much different than yours. They go by your, not by what everyone else needs to learn at the same time, but what each individual 
is able to do and able to understand and perceive and move as quickly as possible. Have I made myself clear on that? I am not sure. Yeah, yeah, I understand what you're saying. And also, you we have talked about the jewelry in the past. Whenever there is a celebration, whenever there is a graduation or any kind of achievement that is being celebrated, we all wear our celebration jewelry. And this jewelry has been handed down through generations. Each piece has its own story. Each piece tells something about you someone's life or someone's history. Now, as we go to these celebrations, you ad may admire something on someone that is a piece of jewelry that you find most interesting. And if you do, they will tell you the story of where this piece of jewelry has come from. They will give you the history of how it came into being who wore it and what the history of it was and how it has been passed through the generations and the history that it has acquired during that period of time. Sometimes these stories can be lengthy, but they are very valuable and they tell us about our genealogies and the friends of the genealogies of our friends. Now, at the time when you tell this story, you will remove that jewelry and give it to them so that they may take this story with them. Of course, these stories are recorded as well, so that they may know them and learn them as, as quickly and as thoroughly as possible, so that the next time when they wear this jewelry, if someone picks it out, they will know all the history of it. It is not laborious to learn this because it is a great pleasure to share our history one with another. It is one of our great joys to share our ancestry one with another so that we may continue our family line in historical speech and in beautiful uh, stories. Not that we do not believe that they have not gone on to the Oversoul, or not that they, there is no heaven and we must keep them alive in this world, but we have our pride about our ancestry and our friends' ancestry. Now, I know that many things on your planet can revolve around jewelry as well. There are histories there but you really don't tell them too much as we do. You just pass them on and they are a remembrance of that person or of that particular time in history. However, we do tell the stories so that the history may continue and that it may be lively, beautiful, and accessible to all people, including our children. When children are born on our planet, they are given a piece of jewelry, and this is part of their beginning. They're part of their legacy, and their story will be told as well. Are there any questions? Wow, that's very interesting. Um, we had a just a question on clarification um when i had spoke with you last i believe you had clarified for me you guys the blue pleiadians um are in the fourth dimension fifth density is that right well fourth dimension as you know it yes densities and dimensions are different but they can be similar but remember that a dimension and a density can be different. So, but we are in fourth density, which means that we are the, in the density above yours. Yeah, um, from what I understand, the difference really um, comes down to the exchange of energy or how, how do I word this? <laughs> how, how much energy is able to move, please? 
Yes, let me tell you what the difference is in a very simple way. For dimensions, our science stays the same in some ways, changes a little bit. But for dimensions, science changes a great deal. The science of, di of a different dimension, such as chaotic time or the edge of a wormhole or things of this nature which uh, settle into other dimensions of uh, reality, they, science changes there in some ways and things become uh, unlike what you are used to in your regular world, in your regular realities. Now, in another density, science may stay very similar. There will be some small changes, but the biggest change will be the density, how dense the, dense the, the molecules are put together in some ways. But science will stay very similar. Now, in different dimensions, science can be very different. It will not follow the basic um, principles that are set down by your scientists uh, mathematically. Math changes in those chaotic time areas. Math changes in the areas of... Uh, black holes and uh, wormholes even. So you may find that algorithms will have to be changed and some will be backwards instead of forwards, meaning that you will have to take the calculation from the, from the end to the beginning instead of the beginning to the end, or from the center out to each side, especially in chaotic space. Things of this nature. And so it changes the way science works. All right. Thanks for the clarification, Lakesh. Okay, awesome. Um, so we have some questions coming in for you. And um, the first one we have is from Herkimer Diamond. Uh, she is asking, I've been seeing some aliens recently, including a being that looked like Lakesh. Could he tell me anything about who's been around lately? There are several people around your solar system at this time. Because of the way the ascension is moving and because of the fourth dimensional uh, anomaly that has been in your solar system, there are a great many um, beings around doing a lot of scientific work, checking things out and making sure that they understand the way that the fourth dimensional anomaly has affected Earth, and affected the solar system and the sun, especially. So therefore, many think that the fourth dimensional anomaly was here just for Mother Earth, but it was here also for the other planets as well, and the sun. You realize that the fourth dimension has opened many portals on your world, and you are starting to move in a different direction. So therefore, it is apparent that things are changing on your world. Science is very is still much in charge, but there is a time of magic that is coming. You would call it magic, but it is actually a psychic realm that is coming to your world. It is opening up and becoming more apparent all the time. And this energy of the fourth dimension opens up these areas in the brain that are still asleep you realize that the brain, you only use a very small portion of it. What else do you think is there? The fourth dimensional energy will open some of these areas of the brain that have been closed for many millennia. So now you are entering into a time of change, of great evolution in many cases, which we speak about all the time and are very interested in but I think I got away from the original question. Um, what was the original question again? I think I, I somehow got away from it. That's okay, I love it. <laughs> um, she was just uh, asking, Herkimer Diamond was asking, what kind of oh, beings Oh yes, what beings her? have been around her. Yeah, and why I, she saw Lakesh looking being. Yes, there are beings that look somewhat like us. Um, 
we are now able to travel again. We are now able to accept visitors on our worlds again. There was a period of time when our planet was closed and we went through a stasis period. Of course, it's not never really stasis. It was a time of internal change and we did not want to be affected by anything external. So we, we closed off our planet from travel for a period of about 14 of your Earth years. And so now it is back open again. But we had to maintain a stasis for a little while so that we could um, balance again. But the beings that you are seeing may be from our world. I, I cannot say that for sure, but I know that there are more channelers coming from our world now than there were before. There was only five or six, and now there are more like 12 or 15. So the, your world is becoming very popular. The other beings that you saw were Yu-Gi-Oh and Greys. Could you see them clearly or were they in another dimension? Could you ask her that, please? Um, sure, yeah. Uh, she said, just in my vision. Just, you mean Some, just... She's I think she might mean third eye or something. She, Yeah, third eye vision. She said somewhat clear, yes. And were they grays? Uh, let's see. She's typing here. She said looked similar. Yes. There, there are seven different gray species around your planet right now. Of course, there's more than that in the universe. But there are about seven different gray species that look similar to the Zetas, but they, the Zetas are very particularly looking. They're the ones that you see most. But these other species of greys are in your system. And also there is a section of the Octorian people that are um, where they pastel color. Um, she said, yes, a bit. Uh, yes, yes there is a, it could have been Octorian also. There's a species of Octorians that look like the greys, except for they're a little more pastel colored. The greys take on the gray color, of course, whereas the Octorians take on a more pastel, the pinkish, the light blues, the light uh, uh, purples, etc. in their skin tone, not that they're... <laughs> totally that color but it is they appear to be more pastel shaded so you understand that it could be octorians because they are also becoming more prevalent in your um, solar system at this time very interesting awesome all right thank you um we have a question next from khan or excuse me amran amran um did you are you able to unmute yes. Yes, I do. Thank you. <clears throat> Hello, Lakesh. How are you? Greetings. Yes, is I that have a question. question. Is that you yes. on the picture? That is not me. That is someone called... Hmm, what is he called? I forgot his name. Um, Sanat Komara. Interesting. Yes. I, I think I've met that particular person before, but continue. Yes, uh, I, I believe he is in charge of the spirituality of Earth. Ah! So... Continue. <laughs> yes, I have a question about science and how you, in your world, approach the understandings of physics, biology, and so on. Do you do it... I mean, we on Earth, we... When we do a scientific research or have a theory or hypothesis, we use mathematics to to prove that it yes. is real and to show others that they also can believe in it. We kind of show them step by step. So exactly. I was really excited about science and physics, but I was not so excited about mathematics. So how how do you do it in your um, in your yes. world when you when you approach a a physic physical phenomena? If that is a very good question, because uh, there, there are different 
definitely many different approaches to how science is looked at and how physics is looked at. You see, there is different aptitudes for different people on our realms. And there are different perceptions of how things look and what things are. So some people may perceive uh, something in, an, uh, in one way and break it into its scientific parts. Some people may analyze it as a molecules or as uh, small particles. Some people may analyze it mathematically or with algorithms and with, uh, uh, with quantum, uh, quantum thoughts. And some of them, people may just approach it in a purely physical way and identify what it looks like and what it's made of elementally. So there's many different ways to look at one particular object. Say that you're looking at a planet. There are some that will analyze the flora and the fauna. There are some that will analyze the water systems. Some will analyze the atmospheres. Others will break it down into atomic parts. Others will break it down into algorithms and mathematics. There are also quantum parts to everything that exists. So therefore, they will have those moments where they, those that are more advanced, of course, and we all eventually get to the quantum physics and things of this nature. But those that are more advanced will break it into the quantum portions that exist on every level of um, existence. Because in the densities, let's go there for a moment, is third dimension, you can analyze it in one way, fourth dimension, fifth dimension, sixth dimension, another way. And so your readings for these different things may change through the dimensions, but yet they will interact as, as a puzzle would interact in, in your uh, mathematical analysis. Now, it would also interact in your molecule analysis as well, except for you may find that the molecule density is less, even though it may have the same electrons or neurons around it, it, it may still have the same kind of effect in that density, but it may break down into, uh, it may have an extra neuron or proton or whatever. So you must understand uh, the changes between the uh, levels of understanding in the, uh, in the dimensions. Now, as we look at science, it is a wonderful and magnificent thing. And you can map the entire universe through mathematics or any of these things that I mentioned. Molecularly, it can be done. Quantumly, it can be done. Mathematically, it can be done. Essentially, um, in every dimension, it can be broken down into many different forms. And visually, of course, it can be understood and mapped. Does this answer your question? Thank you, it does. I, yes, I wanted to know how, how you do your things there, how you educate your students, and uh, is your ah, mathematics like similar to we are, we are all individual students of our own um, thought processes. Once we are born, several months after that, we are giving several different tests to check where our greatest interests are, where we are moving. And as we get older, every few months there is a test to uh, see where we are moving, where our thoughts are going, how our language is developing, and things of this nature. So as we begin our learning as a student, we are learning what we are most capable to learn first, which gives us the greatest amount of success. And then as our interests change, we move forward and become more well-rounded. Yes, thank you very much. For you your, I'm, I'm very pleased and happy to know your way of doing things.
Oh, we are very excited. We hope that someday Earth will be similar in their thought process about education because each person is different. No one has the same academic uh, outlook or needs. And so it needs to be more individualized. It needs to break down and it needs to be what you need it to be for yourself. Now, there are many different teachers. You see, there are many thousands and millions of programs uh, that are teaching each individual in their own way, at their own level. And they can be adaptable to each, an indiv each individual person on our planet. And if it is too advanced, then they can go to a slightly less advanced portion perhaps with the same teacher, but with some elements removed. It is interreactive with the uh, abilities of the student. Yes, okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Very interesting, thank you. Um, we had a question from Khan for you, Lakesh. He said, I miss you, Lakesh. What have you been up to? Have you had any new celebrations? Are you able to see my drawings from our internet? Absolutely. And yes, yes, and yes. All, all answers are yes. I have been working on some quantum physics, and that was there are so many different portions to it. Um, and we go beyond quantum, and we go to Enkinsen, and we go to Fensurata, and there are different kinds of uh, mathematics that you're not even aware of yet that go even deeper into understanding antimatter and what is beyond the fabric of time and space what is the essence of the universe and what is the essence of the divisions between the universes because that is uh, a very a very very interesting because the realm between the universes has much plasma in it and much uh, many elements that are unknown to uh, most worlds the reason for this is because it's a division area and it, it, it cannot be gone through uh, without God's permission in a sense. So, but there are some beings that have evolved to that level where they can um, make it through, but it takes a long time. The density of the, the outside realms of the universe are incredible and it takes a good deal of time to motive, um, get through them, and they're very, very dense. But once again, I just get on my own thing and move forward. That's the way I am. I'm sorry about that. But um, but I just love talking about um, the things that I'm learning and the things that are moving forward in our thought processes. Always we are moving forward, and we are helping humans as much as we can with counsel in this way. We do not actually uh, um, belong to any alliances or things of this nature, but we do like to keep in touch with as many species as we can and uh, be friendly with them. Now, we don't let them affect our society, we, uh, and that we are just now allowing them to come back onto our planet. Like I said, for a while there we had restrictions on that because we were going through some changes and some balancing things. So we are now in a much better place. I'm sorry, did I answer that well enough? That was amazing. I uh, I like how long-winded you are. It's all right, Lakesh. Um, he uh, Khan wanted to say hi to your granddaughter and your grandchildren and pass oh, them. Oh, they're love. amazing, aren't they? I <laughs> I'd love to draw them for me. Yes, you're so good. Thank Please. You. Oh, that would Remember be awesome. Remember my granddaughter. My uh, you, I always like telling stories about my granddaughter, of course, because she is the love of my life right now, and. Uh, not that my spouses aren't loved, it's not that. It's just that I, 
she is particularly special to me. She came around at the the moment in my life where I needed something uh, to believe in, and she is very, very, very special. Oh, that's so yeah. wonderful. Awesome. Well, we definitely pass our love on to your collective and your family. And um, I call her Lee. That's a, a human word, a human name that people can remember, Leah or Lee. And she is just wonderful. She is uh, very vital. She's very intelligent. And she is just uh, a sparkle in my eye. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh, we love it. All right. Um, we have more questions coming in. Uh, I think Sheena, Sheena, Sheena would like to ask a question. Yes. Yes. Hello. Hello, Sheena. Hey. Hello. <laughs> nice to meet you, Lakesh. This is my Thank first time nice well. speaking. And thank you. Um, uh, uh, first of all, um, my son is a blue player. Yeah, uh, he's a little bit difficult to figure out, but he's very loving. He's acting like my father. Yes, he's about twenty now, twenty twenty years old. Yes, uh, yes, and um, you like how he's doing? Yes, is he not living at home with you any longer? Where is he now so that I might, well, picture his face and I'll move through your DNA levels to find where he is. Yes, yes, he's oh, a nice young man, very nice looking for an earthling. And he is a very special, isn't he? He has a disconnect with third dimension as many humans do because he comes from a different dimension and does not relate easily to third dimension sometimes however he is friendly loving and kind and many like him very much he is he does have some special gifts um if he would want to he would be he could be able to buy locate or even channel i believe and he has um a gift of understanding meaning that he when he meets someone he immediately knows in some way who they are. Is this the person that I am talking about? He, he, he's he is very special. Much, Go ahead. He, um, yes. Um, he knows that um, I am, um, you know, uh, uh, yes. from him, but want me to to speak to anyone about it uh, uh, in uh, in communities he like this about it just he wants he wants does he accept it yes he does uh, he always say that i'm very good with uh, the heavens <laughs> for some reason i don't know why he said that yes let me explain where he is at in his mental condition right now he is at a place where he does not really want to discuss the other worlds because it is not uh, accepted by the people that are around him. He is, he is accepted for who he is, but they do not realize that he is Pleiadian. And they do not realize that you are Seraphim. And so he wants to keep that sort of quiet at the moment because he wants to be accepted and he wants to be able to help these people as much as possible in his own way. And if they knew this, he feels like he would have less of an opportunity to help them. He is, um, he is uh, empathic in the sense he, that he can take on other people's emotions and, and he feels exactly what they are feeling. And so he wants to be able to continue that work without any interference at this time. There will be a time later in his life where he will uh, embrace all these things and um, let other people know. But right now, he is not real confident that they would understand because the people that 
he is around are very young and are very third dimensional. So however, so even though he is proud of who you are and proud of what he is as well, he wants to continue some of this work. Does that make sense to you? Yes, it does. He is it special. Does very much. Thank you for that. He is special that he can. Very, like, sorry, you I couldn't hear, hear it all. Uh, you are going in and out. I cannot hear all the things that you are saying. Yes, correct. Uh, uh, it was some interference, I think. Maybe some some beings around me because as happened uh, I, in the last time, whenever I yes, there are speak or write. Yes, there are beings around you. Excuse Mostly me? you yell. There's you yell around you, and there is angelic uh, natured people around you as well. That's because your seraphim based angelic people would be drawn to that. Yes. Yes. Okay. Can I uh, ask one more question? Certainly. Is it possible uh, to give my mother a um, uh, fila or because she needs a lot of healing after a car accident? Accident. She was actually hit by a car that that um, ran away. So now she has to walk with um, thing. I don't know what it's called in English. Yeah. It goes on wheels chair, but she has to hold on to it. Yes. Let me tell you something. You have very much healing energy in your hands, your third eye, your eyes, and uh, your heart chakra. There is a lot of healing within you. Yeah. Let me send you some special energy to ignite them even greater. What the person named Will would call holy fire. Oh, and you oh, will yeah, you. be able to help her with her healing yourself. Yes. See, child, what I was sure I were at you. Kuriara. Yes, thank you, Will, for your help. I appreciate that. He is sending it as well to you, and you are ignited in the holy fire so that you may help her in many ways to recover more quickly. Thank you so much, and so much love to you and blessings. Uh, do you feel the energy coming to you now? I do. You will feel it soon if you do not yet. Yes. Beautiful. Well. Thank you very much. I enjoyed that. I love yes, helping you. Today. Me too. Healing you, is Gina. a very wonderful and special thing. Yes, it is. And we all have the ability to do it. And we are awakening to it. It is amazing. So... Watch is out, there world. This room. Yes. There is questions within this room. I Go will have them ahead. ask. I'm sorry. I did not mean to interrupt you. No, that's okay. But time is. Yes. Continue. Lakesh, it's Raymond. Raymond, hello. Long time, my friend. It has been a while. Because of us, because of us being closed for a little while. How is my son Galifin doing? He is doing well, growing up very strong and bright. You remember what he is interested in? Yes. He is doing very well and he is continuing to move in that pathway. Give him a big hug for me. You come in the astral now and then to do that yourself, right. but I always am attentive to him. He is one of our special children, and we have sent him to Maya. You understand that? Yes, yes. You've, we've told you that before? Yes. Excellent. He is on Maya, and he is growing and being educated in the most wonderful way. All but right. I go visit him now and then. All right. That Excellent. is all. Excellent. Oh, thank you. Awesome. Um, Brian has a question next. Can you Brian. unmute, Brian? 
Hello, Brian. It's good to see you or hear you anyway. Hello, my friend. How are you, Lakesh? It's been a while. Yes, it's been a, a while. <laughs> good to see you. And how yes. are your children? Good. Logan and Owen are doing really well. Very, very I well. I enjoy them very much. Oh, I know. And uh, we'll let Jim know we'd like to uh, come and visit again, Jim, in May sometime. So we'll definitely Absolutely. plan a trip. I'm sure he would be fine with that, but I'll let him know. <laughs> uh, my question, dear friend, is the the imagination, this what we call imagination, the very essence of imagination. Um, a lot of times on this planet, uh, as human beings, we take that for granted. We don't feel that it's powerful, that it that it ha that it has meaning, that it that it, it that it could m move and touch the other realms. You know what I mean? It's it's like I understand. it's that's why we feel that just by thinking about these things or letting our mind uh, to evolve to imagine, we feel that it doesn't that we're not reaching out enough or that we really it's like it's uh, too mundane or you know what I mean? So I was wondering these realms, these things that people create, their music, their artwork. Um, I was wondering their inspiration, where they get these things from. Is it really actually a collective of collectives from the universe, from others also? Well, let me explain something to you. And I know that once I say this, you're going to go, oh, oh I understand. <laughs> um, first of all, you are all creator beings because your soul is a fragment of God's spirit. He has put that in you. That is part of you that is God. You are part of God. God is part of you. And so these imaginations, these creations, these thought processes are from the creator realm, which is inside of you. You could not have an imagination or creativity without God being part of you. Now, where do you get these inspirations? God has put inspiration around all peoples at all times if they can possibly see it because it is what he does. He is an inspirer, a creator, a one that wants you to grow up in the most wonderful way possible and the most uh, unique way that he has given you. So. Yes, color can be part of it, um, different shapes, sizes, beauty, as you perceive beauty. Even the ugliest thing can have its beauty, like a rock of lava, a lava rock, or something that's full of potholes and is black. But you can find inspiration anywhere. Mm -hmm. And that is what God has intended. And so therefore, yes, there are those that bring their thought processes together to bring the fire of creativity into another realm, if you will. But you yourself, with your imaginations and your creativities, are part of the God realm because he is in your soul. He is part of the soul. Part of the fire of God is born into your soul because so that you may be uh, create creative beings, if you will. Yes. So, was it, so was what I was expanding on and sharing also. So, when we're these imaginations, when we have, when we use our imagination, when we're closing our eyes or just meditating or visualizing, we're actually touching these other realms. Like, Absolutely. like if we're seeing, if we picture in our mind right now, just yes. uh, uh, a blue alien or something out there we actually it does exist that's what i was saying so through how powerful our imagination really is but we it's sometimes take it for granted absolutely now what you don't realize is this god has created many 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 things but he's given you the ability to create as well so when you think of something original that god has not which is very rare <laughs> create that in the universe because all things are possible and all things exist all things exist no matter what it is that you think of it will mm -hmm. exist because God wants to experience that as much as you do 
Some things you don't want to exist, but God will create it anyway because <laughs> it is your free will to create things. It is your free will to move into different aspects of uh, thought processes. So he will create that in the universe so that you can experience it. And if God did not create it, then you couldn't experience it. Right, right. Very interesting. Thank you much love and light, Lakesh. Thank you, my friend. Much love and light to you as well. Incredible. Thanks. All right. Um, we have a question from Sheer. Hello, Sheer, Lakesh. how are you, my friend? I'm very well. How are you? I'm wonderful. Well, I have two questions. One. If it's now available to go to your planet, is it possible yeah. for me to visit you? Yes, you can visit in the fourth dimension or in astral, whatever you want to call it. Uh, your governments will not allow anything else, but yes, we welcome you. Okay, cool. And second, you spoke earlier about magic returning to our uh, realm. And yes, you spoke about the it things would seem like it. Yeah, it seems like magic. So, how long until we're going to notice it? Like a day, two, a year, three years? Well, some people have already realized it. Some people understand that that it exists already. Some people do not. And some people are very third dimensional, meaning that they stay within the realms of their reality that they were taught about. But, there is magic afoot on your planet. You realize that the energies of the Earth have changed since the fall of 2014. And, or was it 15? I'm not sure what your years are right now. But it, it, the energies have changed, and so you're going to start to see that there are new species of animals, new species of insects that have not been discovered, Things will be seen that have never been seen before. Things will appear uh, to be magical, but they are actually going to be the changing of your science in some ways. So therefore, mental abilities will be increasing, and a lot of people will see that as magic as well. Okay. Thank you very, very much. You're welcome. Wow, cool. All right. Uh, Christy has a question. Ah, Christy. Hello, Kish. Hello. Nice to talk to you. It is nice to talk to you. Um, can, I, can I ask about our connection uh, with the Blue Pleiadians? Yes, let me see. Let me look at you from this realm to that, and then let me see our connection. Okay. Ah, you do have Blue Pleiadian within you. Also, you do have um, other Pleiadian blood as well, not just blue, but Nordic Pleiadians in you as well. So therefore, yes, we do have a connection. We've been in many lives together, for one thing. That is one thing that we do have connection. But right now, you have some psychic connections to the Pleiades. There are star seeds that are wanting to uh, visit with you and let themselves be known. Do you feel this? Um, I, I, I don't know exactly where it's all coming from. I see. Do you feel energies from the Pleiades? Is that what you're saying? Oh, oh yes, most definitely. That is your starseed family that is trying to connect with you. They will in some way do that but I cannot connect you with them today. They will have to do that in the way that they see fit. That is the protocol that they must use. I must not interfere with that. And that's the Nordic Pleiades or the, the Blue Pleiadians? I think it's Blue Pleiadians. Okay. The shorter ones, just like myself, but it is not necessarily my family, but it is a family that is on planet two. I'm on planet one. Okay. Let me get you in touch with Zizha Jean. They call her Georgette on your planet. <laughs> she likes that. 
but oh. her name is Zizhuzhu, and she is um, she is she knows the family that your star seeds are from. Okay. Very well. That will happen soon. Okay. She will be in touch. Can I call her Gigi? Of course. She okay. likes Georgette. Gigi. Uh, Georgette. Okay. Gigi Georgette. She is wonderful. She is very special. Okay, thank you. Um, my second question is, um, I'm, I have an aspect of myself that is with the Super Soldier program as a remote viewer. And I, I recently uh, saw in this reality, uh, th one of the soldiers dying and it, it really affected me yesterday is when it happened. And um, can you expand on that a little bit for me to help me kind of clear or what I need to do to help my energy on this level as well? Well, when you are in the super soldier program, you realize that you are, uh, that you were recruited to be in that, in a particular war at this time, which is at the edge of this galaxy. And it is a very strong war with uh, several different species. But they are recruiting people from all different species to help them. And you realize super soldiers are those that can do that which is above the ordinary. And um, I see that the person that has died is someone that you were very close to. And it is affecting your emotional state right now. You, you are actually connected to the other super soldiers that are from Earth, which are many. Um, I see that this was perhaps even um, someone you were very fond of. Mm -hmm. Is this true? Yes, very correct. Um, they are. They are still going to reach out to you even beyond this point because they will be. Um, they will be in spirit at this time, and you do not have to grieve for them. They're in a very good place. But I understand that you will miss them in, uh, in this particular super soldier situation because they were actually the, the closest person to you in this realm. And so you will miss them greatly when you are going there. But there are other people in this realm that care about you a great deal. So therefore, please let them know how you are feeling and they will help you. I think Neil333 is also attached to this person. To the one that, that passed, that yes. was killed. Do you know who that is? Do you know who Neil333 is? Yes. He, you will, he is, you are aware of him, perhaps not by that name, but he yes, is, I know him. yes, I know Neil, uh-huh, yes, you know who he is, well yes. then he is also attached to this person and is feeling some sorrow as well, okay, yeah, well he's connected, I connect with the soldier, of, uh, our heart connection, because I'm a remote viewer for the soldier, yes, I understand, it, I can see it in, you see, I cannot see it in its full perspective of what it is, but I can see it in the perspective of the personal realm to you. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Yes. So therefore, yes, I can see that, and I can see the connections, which are actually more than one, but I just wanted to mention that one because he is a leader in that group. Neil is a leader? Yes. Okay. All right. I'll share this information with him. Very well. Thank you, Lakesh. Much You're love welcome. to you. You're welcome. Wow. Thank you so much. Um, so we're, uh, we're a little bit past the hour mark. Lakesh, we love you so much. Uh, wondering if Anyone else is is w wanting to pop in today and provide us some messages, and we hope to see you soon. <laughs> oh, very well. Oh, yes, I'm sure that are here. Do you want to uh, talk to them? 
Yes, please. I know what you guys will get them for you. Or whoever is coming next. I'm not sure. Okay. Much Thank you. So much love. We'll talk to you later, Lakesh. Yes. Very well, Lakesh. Yes. Greetings. I am Takur. Hi, Takur. Greetings. It is good to be here. But I am only here for a short while to answer any additional questions that might be left over from the meetings with the governments. I, am, I have been sworn to uh, keep you up to date on these things, and therefore that is why I am here. We definitely appreciate it. Uh, it's completely fascinating and important for us to know. Um, Krellick actually has a question right off the bat. Very well. I guess he'll have to actually, actually have two questions. Excellent. Uh, <clears throat> Speak up, though. You are very soft. My first question is about, uh, about, about the updates on what the government is doing. Uh, with Garfield Mir, if there's any updates on that. Um, they have taken... One moment, please. Okay. <coughs> he needs water. Thank you. The governments have taken several actions at this time. Because of the inauguration of your new president, they have actually been a little more wary of the United States. Um, at this time, they are girding up their securities. They are not sure in which direction he will be going. So they are going to be very attentive to the first, what is called the first hundred days. He is bringing attention on your United States that is good and bad. So therefore, there will be some very interesting changes, I'm sure. Now, he is entering under fire into this position. There are many things that they are looking at unfavorably about him. There are many that are very much in favor of him, but they do not wish to accept all the information that is out there about him. But the governments have researched it very deeply. In, in another way, they are they are planning to continue to speak with us and work with us as much as possible. In fact, this particular person has actually sparked more interest in alien awareness because he does not really believe in these things. So other countries have been interested more in us than they have in the past, which is in interesting for us as well. Is there another question? Um, yes. And does uh, does the solar system that we live in 
does it have a form of a uh, structure uh, similar to the uh, similar to the uh, to the United Nations here on Earth, where it would be more of a uh, a United Planets of the Soul System or something? There is a Galactic Council, yes, which takes in all the different planets that have life on them that are interactive in the galaxy which earth is not part of yet the solar system is not populated with a lot of species that are aboriginal to the solar system but is populated with many different species now from outside of this solar system the only exception being the Venusians and the Martians, who are, uh, the Martians are internal now inside the planet, and the Venusians are uh, very much aware of all the things that are happening. Let's put it that way. But they are the only two other planets other than Earth that have sustainable life. There is a planet around Jupiter that does have life as well, but mostly it is extraterrestrial from their, from their uh, realm and is from outer worlds and from other parts of the galaxy. But there is life there also, but it is not intelligent enough to be in space. Uh, yes, thank you for that. I do have one final thing to say. It's more of a statement. Um, uh, you and well, as as I'm sure you pro you are probably aware, I'll be uh, traveling soon uh, in the next few weeks. Yeah. And I just I just uh, you and I have talked about it, and I just wanted to like to wish me luck on that. You will have a. You will be well taken care of. I do not see any problems, but I do wish you well and have a wonderful trip. Yes, thank you. Awesome, thank you so much. Uh, actually, I would like to ask a follow-up question about um, some of those topics in terms of, I'm not sure if this has been discussed before, but Takur, would you be willing to maybe talk a little bit about any connections, if any, to Girk Fitnir and the colonies and the secret space program and the super soldier program? You mean if there is any connections of those programs to Girk Fitnir? Yeah, if if there's even communication or, or anything, or are they completely They're separate? In they, they are separate from us. However, there is communications, of course because they are aware that of who we are we are aware of who they are and so therefore definitely there are communications and there are some times when we must meet with them to make sure that things are in order so to speak we do not want to cause any problems with the space program or any other programs that are running on your planet and therefore um we are separate from them in the sense that we do not share the same thought processes or same reasonings for existing. So therefore, they are separate. Now, we do share information so that we will be safe one with another. Do you understand that? Yeah. We also share information so that we may help in some ways to keep them safe now there are times when your secret space program as as an example can reach into certain realms of um science that they are not completely able to handle and so therefore we try to help them to adjust or to stay away from these particular areas that they cannot um, control or manipulate in a proper way to be safe. Okay, 
That's very interesting. Um, but as far as being um, allies, well, yes, allies we are, but they are not part of Group Vignir. Yeah, I understand that. Um, Lakesh had mentioned earlier, I'm not sure how much you want to get into this, but I'm just curious, as far as the super soldier program, he mentioned that there's a some fighting going on. Um, not to get too negative here, but I'm just curious if that's going all right and kind of what that's all about, if you can elaborate at all. Uh, well, I would... I can elaborate a little bit. However, I do not want to get into the business of war on the other side of the galaxy. However, there is a war going on there, and they have recruited many of human beings to be super soldiers, training them and giving them the armor and the wherewithal to fight in these battles. Now, that does not mean there will not be uh, problems or death but they will not appear to be I, I have to say this in a way that is um, most correct because in some ways uh, talking about this is very emotional for us because we do not want to be any part of it or allies even with it you may say why wouldn't you want to ally with your friends but the basis of the war is something that we are not, uh, we are, do not agree with. So therefore, okay. we do not want to be part of it. But if they recruit people from your planet and they accept, they will be uh, responsible for their own actions. So therefore, there has been some deaths on these worlds, but they do not translate into death of the human being, but it does translate into a death in the sense that they can no longer fight in that battle. Okay, uh, I think I understand. Um, it, because I have heard of super soldiers here on Earth that have been hybridized and it, like their whole life, and I'm not sure about the accuracy of this, but from personal accounts that I heard from people, you know, their life was kind of predestined for them to be a super soldier. They had no idea what was going on until they, you know, later on in life. So um, when they're hybridized like that and they're supposed to be a super soldier with the program and with their life on earth, I, I'm not clear about that. Yes. Um there are a select few not not all are like this not all were born on earth to become super soldiers there are a few select that came back and knew that that's what they were going to be doing they set their frequency for that when coming back to this planet that you live on but not all have been recruited that way so yes there are some that their life has been changed completely by the hybridization of of them before they were even born or as they were being born hmm, yeah it's very interesting um in, in terms of are you able to elaborate at all on why we our governments are involved in something not even close to earth in that your government actually your governments have given permission for the people to be, be recruited for this because they do not go in physical form they go in a different dimensional outfit so to speak mm -hmm. so therefore they don't care about this if it's in another dimension they cannot be blamed for it they cannot be responsible for it and so they sort of uh, just reject that it is even possible at times. There are many on your planet that say, oh yes, we know that it exists, etc. But there are some that just say, let it happen, we don't care. Um, as governments tend to do when they are not directly involved. Hmm. When you say that they 
in a different dimension when they're when they're doing that and they can't be blamed do you mean by their own understanding they, they cannot be blamed by the people of earth for letting these people go oh i see okay just just because we um feel as though we don't yet understand different dimensions like as a collective you mean or yeah. but this the thing is they may go in uh astral form to this battle but the battle is actually being fought in third dimension. Huh. That's interesting. It's hard for you to understand, but the armor becomes a third dimensional once they get there. The armor, you said? Yes, the outer portion. The life within the armor can stay fourth dimensional or in the astral form, but can be aware of all things going on because that's the way they developed it and trained it. It can be trained from a fourth dimensional aspect and still become part of the third dimension as a, a battle armament. Wow, fascinating. This is a lot of information. Thank you, Takur, for sharing. I know we have a lot more questions, so I suppose we've got to move on. Um, David Allen was wondering um, why he possibly has a Pleiadian hybrid that has been observing him. Correct. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I guess he was. No, oh, sorry, David. Go I, ahead. I am back. Yeah, no, it's just it's just one of two possible beings that I've seen that I've since I was younger, but I'm not entirely sure if it was completely Pleiadian. I'll just... Yes, it's a, a Pleiadian hybrid, as you said. Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's one of the early children from the program. Oh, no, yes, yeah, just of always, just when I have seen it, it was always like a bluish type of entity. Yes. Yes, there are many that are visiting people on Earth to do studies at this time. It is their great interest to study humans, human culture, their traditions, the topography of the land, the essence of it, and uh, human psychological psychology and sociology. All right, yes. It's just that that kind of explains what I have seen it do around where I live. Yes, exactly. It is studying all of the things related to you on the planet in the sense that you are interrelated to the environment and atmosphere and karma of the social atmosphere so therefore it is studying all the effects on you and you your effects on it and like the only time i actually noticed it when i looked like looked right at it yes you are not really supposed to be able to see it, but I, I am assured with the fourth dimensional energy that's been released at this time that many will be able to start seeing different things that they've never been able to see before. Notice, you know, just I've felt it around, but the last time I actually saw it was about 10 years ago. It's still around, but it's being more careful. <laughs> um, hi. Hi. Okay, um, okay, what's the name again? I'm so going to mess up this name. And has one of my guides, Anisha? Anasia been around? Anasia? Yes, Anasia. Anasia is always around. That is one of your spirit guides. 
So, of course, Anastasia will be around. It can also be pronounced Anistia, but Anastasia is preferable. Oh, no. No. Nice. Continue. Is there another question? Thank you. No, 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 um, no. Thank okay. You. Thanks, David. Um, we have questions from uh, from Xiao. Um, she was asking, she has quite a few questions, but I will um, ask one and we'll get to some others later. Um, she wants to know, I'm going to particularly ask your dimension and your race to her. I know this could go, this question could go on forever. She says, when a being in your race reaches the age of death or dies, do they suddenly vanish from thin air with their physical body or do they still have to go through the dying process like humans do? Are you able to tell us more about the uh, funeral ceremony also? Yes, there, it, there is physical death. It has to be that way for many reasons, and God can answer all those questions. But yes, um, there we have to go through physical death as well. We have to move from one place to another, because you cannot just vanish and go into the next realm unless you are um, graduating to the next dimension so to speak. But in your realm, third dimension, if you are dying in the third dimension, you must uh, leave the body to move into the oversoul. The same with us. We must leave the body to move into the oversoul. Now, our funeral processes, we see how you do your particular funeral processes. You see, our funeral processes are done before death because there is, on our world, a, a sign when death is imminent, even with any kind of disease or any kind of uh, aging, there will appear marks on the body that tell you that death is coming within a certain period of time. Uh, there are different markings for different periods of time, but we do understand them and have been able to figure them out. But within several days of the funeral, we gather the families together to say goodbye and to wish them a safe and wonderful trip to the next lifetime. And this is when we pay our respects, and when everyone says what they need to say. Many times this is the most wonderful celebration because it is loving, kind, um, and many people are wishing them well into the next world. And then, as it comes time, for them to pass, they move into their, into the area where they will pass and are taken care of by many, uh, whether it can be their friends or family, it is up to them who they would uh, ask to prepare the body for um, the final moments. Okay, very interesting. And you're you're speaking specifically from your dimension, correct? Correct. From our species. Yeah. All right. Wow. Um, and when you said graduating <laughs> to different dimensions, you mean ascending, I'm assuming? Raising yeah, frequency? Exactly. Um, you can disappear from one density to another density only if you have ascended into a different density from the one you are in. Now, that is not death. That is an ascension. Of Interesting. Sort. Yeah, and it seems as though um, that is happening on this planet to humans as well, and their physical bodies are 
<laughs> it is happening, yes. It yeah. has been happening now for 10 years. But it will continue to happen for at least 150 to 200 more. So when, when people do graduate, as you say, they raise their frequency, their light body emerges essentially, but their physical body kind of just stops, right? Their 3D. Yes, I do not know how to exactly... No, it just changes density. It takes some time. For some people, it may only take 24 hours. For other people, it may take a week or 10 days. But their density, they realize what is happening and they separate themselves from other people because um, if they didn't do that, if they did not separate themselves from other humans, then they will not translate or they will not graduate because other humans will keep them here in this realm. Would you say that's what's been happening to some of the celebrities that have been um, passing away, as we understand, recently? Not exactly. They can okay. pass away to the oversoul. But when you graduate, you actually disappear from one place and are in another, which means that you go from third density to fourth density and you, you become part of a different uh, realm altogether. Okay, interesting. We're wrapping our minds around it. <laughs> Thanks. Um, we have quite it a few more not questions. Easy to understand. Yes, I understand. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, well, I'll try to fit a few more in here. Maria is asking, why am I not remembering my dreams in detail, and how can I fix that? There could be several reasons why you are not remembering your dreams. First of all, um, they may not be worth remembering. Second of all, if, they're, if you're not remembering them, sometimes that means that you're not ready for the information that they have to bring. But if you would like to remember your dreams better, you can, before you go to bed, uh, do a small meditation, an intention that you remember your dreams better and that they become more clear. Now, if they are not meant to be remembered, you will still not remember them. However, many people have discovered that if they do this, the dreams that are meant to come and inform them of different things will happen then. And there are always dreams that are meant to happen in the now. There are some dreams that are not meant to happen in the now, but happen in the now because they know that you won't remember them. But to give your subconscious a head, a head start or a heads up, so to speak, does that make any sense to you? Yeah, yeah, I think so. If it does not, ask more questions. I um, can explain it better, probably. Um, well, I, I think I understand in terms of, um, yeah, it seems like intention, setting intention is really the biggest key for. Setting intention is, is the biggest key. And actually, um, becoming part of the meditative state would be helpful as well. Okay, interesting. All right, thank you. Um, let's see, we have a question from Angie. Uh, Angie, are you able to unmute? Yes, thank There's you. There's someone in this room that also wants to ask a question. Oh, great. But okay. Angie, no, Angie, go first. Oh, okay. Thank you. Hi, Tika. Uh, we met uh, just a few weeks back. Um, yes. And you know me as uh, the one with the heart problem. We tried yes. to fix that. So yeah. we went and we had a session with Justin and he brought in the angels and he, um, they kind of pulled out all these weird roots and the angel mended my heart. It was a real beautiful experience. Uh, right. I wanted to know if you could perhaps see if that valve was now sealed. One it was a great uh, healing. Yes, it was Thank a great healing. One moment mm. and let me look. Thank you. you. Mm -hmm. 
They will do a scan, and I will let you know in a few moments. Yes, Thank uh, you. An Angie, by uh, roots, you mean there were emotional seeds that had been planted in different um, issues and traumas in your life, just to clarify, and they had, yeah. they had grown into actual roots and problems and caused negativity manifesting into physical form in your body, and um, Archangel Raphael had assisted, so just to clarify for people listening. Um, it if was Raphael was assisting, that I'm sure it's a wonderful healing. Yes. Please. Absolutely. Um, yeah. What I see is this. Was there bleeding? There is no more bleeding at this time. No, there never was. There is no bleeding. There is no... It seems to be fairly normal at this time. One moment. They are looking at all sides. Right. <laughs> While they're looking, it was especially profound with the healing yesterday with the Lirin. Um, Tan, Tan Waki uh, assisted yeah. Angie as well in a healing session with Justin, and it was amazing. Um, and he helped with more of it, and it was beautiful. So that's actually posted. Well. Go and be well, Angie. You're fine. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Does that mean when I come healed that you can see it's done? It's done. Wonderful. Yay! <laughs> Miracle <laughs> healings, guys. Everything is amazing. Awesome. Oh, man. That yeah, is I can so hear it in your voice. There has been many healings recently. Many healings. Ah. Uh, it's so beautiful because I can, I can breathe more air into my lungs and my mind is done and I can think properly. Oh. Yes. I could go on and on and on. There, there has yeah. been some, uh, some healing and there is no scar tissue. Yes, yes. I, yes, I feel that as well. But there is a great clarity there. There's a great clarity, a brightness to it, so it is fresh. Ah, oh, I see. So I'll be best. I'll be um, cautious in the beginning, right? Yes. Wonderful. Keep up the high vibes, girl. Love it. Absolutely. <laughs> awesome. I feel like having a party now. You should. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, I think we only have time for a few more questions. we got to get closing out soon. Here. Oh, um, yes, please. Actually, there's two. I have one. Mine is just a quick one. Your ship, are you still uh, at the outskirts? Um, because I know we're coming to the end of the... Yes. You're still on the outskirts? She's asking if we are still far away at the outskirts of the fourth dimensional energy anomaly yes it is getting smaller toward the end but there is a turbulent turbulent period right at the very end of it but yes we're getting much closer we're only about 6.3 million miles away at this time Thank you. did you have yes. a question also yes. to occur it's raymond yes a long time my friend Long time. Good to see you. Me and a couple of other empaths down here who are closely connected to myself. For the past few days, we were not able to focus on one matter at hand and we're being like scattered in our thinking processes. Was that a preparation signal? to be prepared for this last little bit. Let me explain what is happening with some of these th uh, confusing thought patterns. Yes, you're still in the fourth dimensional anomaly. There are some fifth dimensional pockets within it. You happen to hit one of those, and that breaks, breaks everything up because it is not part of your dimension, not part of... Uh, even fourth dimension is higher and can be confusing, but the fifth dimensional pockets are amazingly disorienting. Okay. However, 
it, it was a very large pocket, and but it, it should be passed by now. Yes. And now, toward the end, there are a few of these fifth dimensional pockets at the end of it as well, but they should go rather quickly. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, we have a question from J Lo from YouTube. That's the name. Um, asking, uh, recently they had hiked up a trail in Panama. The image of a girl appeared in their mind during the hike and felt a presence of reptilian beings living in the surrounding area. They're thinking of going back, wondering if there's any messages for them. Yes, there are reptilians in that area. The Panama area, it, it, let me explain something. Reptilians like that kind of uh, heat and atmosphere. So they are very much a part of the northern parts of uh, South America, the Caribbean, and things of that nature. Also, draconians like under the earth in those kinds of area. That's why they're under China and Japan. And, well, England and France, they're under as well. But um, they do like the heat, and they do like uh, that kind of, uh, temperatures and uh, humidity. The other thing is the 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 spirit of the girl was someone that was lost in that area a while back, and she does communicate with those people that are in that area. She is a friendly spirit, but she has not gone into the light, and she prefers to be on the earth still at this time, even though she is fairly alone. Uh, on the earth in this particular in-between realm okay thank you so much um, we're getting close to the hour so I think we're gonna have to close out here I'm sorry for everyone who didn't get their questions answered um, please book a private session with Jim or anyone if you wish to Shakur thank you so much for joining us today it has been a very expansive webinar thank you and have a wonderful day. Hello. Hello. I was, hi to Car. I was the hello. one that was energetically reaching out. Yes. Saying hello. And personally, I wanted to say thank you so much. And thank you for, for meeting with me, either, either though I was, and wasn't aware of it. But thank you so much for assisting me on having my third child. You are welcome. Have a wonderful because, day. And also thank I give thanks to Girk Fickner as well. You are welcome. Uh, thank you, Pete. Thank you to Kerr. We hope to speak with you soon. Thank you for all the work Girk Fickner is doing with us. We love you so much. Namaste. Namaste. <laughs> <clears throat> Hello. Ooh. Welcome back, Jim. That was amazing. Hello, how are you? How's <laughs> amazing. Going? How are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing awesome. I'm doing well. <laughs> That was incredible. Yes. Wow. Oh. Excellent information. Really, really awesome. Um, oh, I want to make sure we can uh, close on time here. So, um, I'm so, again, I really am sorry for everyone. When we're not able to get to questions, you know, we have to go with the flow here in these webinars. So, um, again, you can reach out to Jim. Jim. Um, Jim's email is. I'm Jim sorry. Reiki. Jim Reiki. Jim Reiki at gmail.com for um, private sessions. And uh, with that said, I think we can close with some <coughs> blessings okay. and and be all set. Uh, looks like Brian is willing to provide a blessing for us. Angela here as well. <coughs> Wonderful. I have a, something in my throat. Hold on. 
No problem. Brian, you can go ahead. <coughs> yeah, can you guys hear me okay? Yes. All right. Silly <laughs> Happy are we to introduce you to greater light. Happy are we to let you find the greater things in your dimensions as well. We teach, we learn, and we are happy to be with you. Honesty and prosperity we will give in particular cases when necessary. We want to have the greatest of connections, but sometimes vocabulary differences will occur and we will not communicate fully. But right now we say, move forward and be blessed. Beautiful. Well, thank you. Um, Angie in the room, you said? Yeah, go ahead. All right. Get <laughs> Helpful hands are everywhere if you could only know where to look. So there we are here. We will be willing to help you in any situation that you may come into. Remember to avoid the negativity as much as possible and only look for those positive outlets. Now, you may think that without negativity there's no fun or no, no things to do, but your people are misled about that. Positivity can be most amusing and most fun if you allow it to be. We will show you the ways in which to be positive and still know that you are alive. Beautiful. Thank you. Um, uh, Arak, did you have a blessing for us? Very well. We shall. Is this Tekker that we are speaking to? Uh, Tekker has left. We are just humans here now. <laughs> mm. <laughs> We require your attention at this time to let you know that we are not what we seem. We are benevolent and we would like to share in your happiness as well. We are enlightened, but yet we do not find that many are friendly. Let us now be more aware of one another in the positivity of this realm. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Um, Will has a blessing for us, and then Johannes. Here, Nakatohor to Kosho Otoria. Ikiwana Chikitana Utu Tukur do what the Kinare is. Here, no Rataya Takachawana Katani to do what not the Jaya. Sawar Hatakan Atakatakaye Chi Urana Hokata Dania. 
sawache ikna atatakashi awara tasaya chikanana ikana no wawara jikitakadua namaste the power of the holy fire is with you now and will be with you forever there is so much healing there and so much understanding there that we wish that you would partake call on it daily call on it hourly let it become part of who you are for it is healing understanding wisdom and guidance it is an aspect of god the father beautiful thank you johannes Shohanayayawaki,anasakiyawahayana. No we give you the words of a song that says enlighten yourself and move in the realms of peace build a heart that is worth living in so that others may want to be near it love everyone and everything because everything is a part of god and know that we ourselves are the songs that lift and become the positivity in other people's lives. Wow, so beautiful. Thank you, everybody. I will do a quick blessing and then we will end for today. Namaste. There's a great chatter in the universe about you, how you are moving along, how you are ascending and becoming part of the new understandings. We are looking at you under the thoughts that you will be our friends and neighbors soon. So be with us in your prayers so that we might understand that you are friendly and you are what we need as a friend in a healing sense. Wow, thank you, Jim. You are amazing at those translations, man. Incredible. <laughs> that, that last one was weird, but a little, but great. Weird, weird how, what do you mean? Oh, it's just hard to get through some of it. Oh, well, it, it was kind through, of hard to say, it. so. Yeah, it's fine. Okay. <laughs> oh, beautiful. Well, um, we've had a beautiful webinar. Thank you, everybody, for joining. We love you. Check out humancolony.org for more events, more stuff going on. Um, and you're all awesome. So we'll close right. it out for today and keep on rocking, guys. See you next week. Namaste. Bye -bye.